What's up everybody and welcome back to another video review. So about a year ago, I reviewed a product from Streamlabs called the Streamlabs Water Monitor, which would, as the name states, monitor your home's water consumption and alert you via smartphone of any leaks due to drastic changes in water flow and pressure. The idea was nice, but if you were away on vacation or out for errands, you couldn't do much about it except go back home to shut the water off. So Streamlabs just came out with a new product which can not only detect minor or major leaks, but it could also shut off the water automatically to prevent damage which is a real game changer. Unlike similar products on the market today, no detection pods are required to detect a leak. It basically uses ultrasonic technology that sends sound waves downstream and upstream inside the pipe which could signal a leak and shut off the water, which is a really neat concept. I do have a discount code for this particular kit, so just wait until the end of the video for the details. This video is going to be split into three sections, starting with the unboxing, then the installation, and finally the setup. So the first thing I want to do with you guys is go through the unboxing step so you know exactly what's in the box when you get it. The first thing you'll notice is a white sticker stating what type of connectors are included. As you could see, Mine are clearly indicated to be 3 quarter inch female NPT threads, so we already know what to get in terms of hardware to connect it. And don't worry, I'll be elaborating on this subject later in the video. This kit can also be purchased with shark bike connections for those who aren't familiar with soldering. On the other faces of the box are the features, requirements and specifications about the product which is nice to see. It also notes here that a 9V battery isn't included for alternate power, so if you plan on using this option, get one in advance. This alternate power is only for manually opening and closing the valve in case of power outage, not for full-time use. It comes in this plastic shrink wrap to protect the box, so let's get that off and open up the box to see what's inside. The first thing to be seen is the actual valve that will be monitoring the pipe and this yellow tube which serves as a temporary bypass during new constructions as to not damage the monitor. Under that are the threaded connections that will screw onto the soldered adapters later during the installation and the retainer nuts with their respective gaskets. Also included is a small envelope with the installation instructions and a little booklet with some safety information inside. And lastly, is a small white box that contains the power outlet that you'll need to give power to the monitor. And that completes the unboxing step. So let's go ahead and install the control. So first things first. If you're not familiar with soldering copper pipes, I suggest not installing this yourself and getting a licensed plumber to install it the proper way. You wouldn't want to install a device made to protect you from leaks and have it leak because of an improper installation. But for those who do feel comfortable doing this type of work and have already done some, I suggest watching my video on how to solder before doing the actual work, just to make sure it's done properly. I'll leave a card here to watch, as well as a link to the video in the description box below. So for demonstration purposes, I'm not doing this on my own waterline because I don't have the proper lighting and space to film. So I set up a wall in my garage to simulate a real life 3 quarter inch water entrance to a single home dwelling. Like with any other waterline repair or modification, you'd want to shut off your main waterline and make sure it's closed off properly by opening a fixture in the basement and letting all the pressure come out. If the water keeps leaking, that means that the valve isn't sealing properly and you'll need to call a plumber to get it fixed before installing the control. If there's no residual water, you're good to go. If for whatever reason you do not have access to a fixture nearby and your main entrance valve has a small purge like this one right here, just grab a pail and empty the system from here. So if you got the shark bite connection version, the instructions come with a nice chart of how much pipe needs to be cut for everything to fit perfectly. If you have the threaded version like I have here, there's no chart with how much needs to be cut seeing tightening could vary from one person to another. So in order to know how much pipe needs to be removed, you'd simply assemble everything together using the gasket into each union and hand tighten your threaded male adapter in as far as you can by hand, which shouldn't go in more than about half an inch. 
These threaded adapters aren't included in the kit, seeing this system could also be installed on PEX or CPVC, so it's set up for you to get the fittings you need for your application. Now you have the final length of it assembled. What I like to do here is take the piece of pipe and insert it into the fitting to mark it. I use this to make a reference mark on the fitting for both sides so I know from where to where to measure to get my final length of pipe to cut. So in my case, I have 10 and 3 quarter inches to remove. The control must be installed after the shutoff valve and before any branches if possible, whether it's in a vertical or horizontal orientation. It also has a flow direction that needs to be respected in order for it to take the proper readings, which is clearly indicated on the bottom of the device. Also note that you can manually open and close the valve via these buttons right here when the valve is powered, and if you have no power, you could use a 9 volt battery as mentioned before to actuate the valve. And lastly, make sure you have a power outlet nearby to power the device. Now, we're ready to make our connections. As I mentioned before, the total length of pipe needing to be cut in my case is 10 and 3 quarter inches, so let's mark that on our line and proceed to cutting. I'm using a close quarter cutter for this situation as they're just easier to use next to walls like this. So cut number 1, good. And cut number 2, perfect. You could use the cutout piece of pipe to double check your measurements if you want, and mine is good. Now, if you have some water left in the pipe like this, you won't be able to solder, so here's a neat trick to get it out in a pinch. Get yourself a spray bottle and use the sprayer inside the pipe to get as much water out as you can of it. The first thing I like to do after cutting the pipe is deburring it. Deburring the pipe does two things. It prevents turbulence inside the pipe, which could eventually cause leaks in the long run, and two, it brings back the pipe to full dimension, giving you better water flow. Also, if you're using the shark bite connections, you'd want to also deburr the exterior of the pipe to remove any burrs that could potentially rip the o-ring inside the fitting. After you deburred it, make sure to purge the line of any shavings that fell inside so they don't go in the control and possibly damage it. Then, go ahead and clean both ends of the pipes. You could use emery cloth or sandpaper, but I prefer using an abrasive pad as I find they're easier to use, but that's all personal preference. Also, don't forget to clean the inside of your male adapters. I use the end of a brush that I cut off and put it in my drill. It makes cleaning fittings a whole lot quicker and it's a lot easier on the wrists as well. Now, you could flux the pipes. I'm using this device called a fluctuator, but you could use tinning flux or normal flux. As long as it's water soluble and is lead free, you're good. So only apply a thin layer of flux or it'll go inside the pipes and possibly cause corrosion in the long run. Good. Now slip on both adapters and wipe off any excess flux around the fittings so it doesn't leak and make a mess when you heat it up. To solder everything together, I'll be using some normal propane, 95.5 solder, which is lead free, and a small pencil torch like this one. When I'm soldering inside a wall, I prefer using these small torches as they're easier to maneuver and they're also more accessible for do-it-yourselfers and do great for half inch and three quarter inch like this. So I'll be starting with the top fitting first. Sometimes, fittings installed in this orientation can have a tendency to fall off. So a neat trick here is to place a piece of wood and use a tape measure to prevent it from falling off or moving while you solder it. I'm using a high flame for this and I'll be circling around it to distribute the heat equally. So here we go. Great! Now, wait a few minutes till everything cools down and wipe off any excess flux that's remaining on the pipes and on the fittings. Once it's cool enough to touch, apply 3 to 4 turns of Teflon tape in the direction of the threads as such. Just so you know, 
Teflon tape is a lubricant that allows for deeper seating of the threads and doesn't actually seal the joint as many of you may believe. Now before continuing, you'll need to slip on the union nuts onto each pipe before tightening on the female end as they can be put on once they're installed. So go ahead and start your female adapters off by hand for both the top and the bottom. And tighten them all the way using a set of adjustable pliers. You don't want to over tighten these or your setup might be too short afterwards and might not fit. So only tighten them so about a half inch of threads go in. I would have liked to see some flat spots or hex shapes on these to be able to use an adjustable wrench and not to mar the surface, but that's only a small detail. So now we could finally install the actual control in place. The first thing I like to do is place the bottom gasket on the fitting, then place the valve in its spot making sure it's orientated correctly and hand tighten the union so it stays in place. I then do the same thing for the top. As you can see, the spacing is perfect and that's how it needs to be done. Before tightening everything, I like to make sure it's pointing in the right direction, so now's the time to make any small adjustments. And finally, I finish both unions with a set of flat jaw adjustable pliers and the installation is complete. Now, before powering up the device, open up your main water valve to pressurize the system and test your work. If there's a leak, Take the time to repair it. If not, plug in the power source to the wall and then into the control. If this is being installed in a new construction, the control would get swapped out with the bypass tube to prevent damage to it and to keep giving water to any contractors on the job. And here's what it looks like finally installed. Now let's talk about the app setup. The app is pretty straightforward and it only takes about 5 minutes to set up. All you have to do is download it on Play Store if you're running an Android or the App Store if you have an iPhone. Create an account and follow through all the steps until you reach this menu right here. Here's where you could set up all your leak, temperature and pressure alerts, set up your Wi-Fi network and add some miscellaneous info such as your time zone and country. On your home page is where you'll see your water consumption, comparative usage and recent alerts. You could also open and close the valve manually if needed, which is a nice feature to have. Alright, so with all of that said, let's throw a few tests at it to see if we could get an alert and if the shutoff valve does its job. I set the app to the away mode to simulate my absence. I'll do both a small and major leak test using this branch that I left off here. So let's start with the small leak and see what happens. Alright, so at 16 seconds the valve detected a leak and shut off on its own. I also got an alert on my phone telling me that there was water running while in the away mode and how much water there was. Now let's try the major leak mode. I'll open the test valve up all the way to simulate a full pipe burst or washing machine hose burst for example. So here we go. And as you could see, it took about the same amount of time as the small leak test for the valve to automatically close which is still very good compared to if you didn't have one of these valves. So what are my thoughts on the Streamlabs leak detection system and is it worth it? After testing it, I really like the idea of being able to leave my house and not think about what would happen and the damage it would do if a pipe would burst and if I wasn't there to do something about it. The price for the device is 600 US dollars plus the installation if you're hiring someone to do the work. So expect to pay anywhere from 800 to 1000 dollars to have this kind of protection in your home. In most cases, a control like this will lower your home insurance rate by a few dollars a month and considering how much a claim would cost, it'll pay for itself in the long run. So is it something I would get personally for myself? The answer is yes. If you're interested in getting your own, you can order a kit at www.streamlabswater.com and use G2L10 to get an instant 10% off of your purchase. That's a $60 saving that Streamlabs Water is giving you, so don't miss your chance.
If you guys liked this video and if you want to see more reviews like this, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment box below. Also, don't forget to like and share this video if you did enjoy it. And until the next one, thanks for watching.